Let's just have a quick show and tell on the various parts of a jet engine. This front part of the cowling, these big fans, that's actually one of the blades. This is titanium, that is a compressor blade. You'll see it's got a hole in the bottom and the ventilation holes in the top, the round holes. They physically pump cold air straight up the middle of that to uh, maintain cooling in the blade to keep it at a serviceable temperature. That is one of the outside compressor blades, one of the low pressure turbine blades. That is another low pressure turbine blade as you can see as I rotate it. It's got that change in pitch that we spoke about to keep constant thrust and constant pressure along the length of the blade. In the middle it produces more thrust in here, or wrong, the angle of attack means the um, it produces more thrust here than it does out at the end, but because that end is travelling faster it ends up being uniform thrust along the blade. These things are milled on a five axis lathe, just google it or have a look below in the comments and I'll put one down there. When we go through towards the middle section, this is a Rolls-Royce blade. Once again, smaller size. Smaller size because the engine is, or the um, diameter of the engine, I'll put them the right way around. That one's one of the black ones, one of the middle ones. That there's one of the outside, um, low pressure, middle pressure turbines blades. It's smaller because the inside of the engine gets bigger to increase the, uh, to improve the compression of the gas. These things here are the um, high pressure turb high pressure compressor blades. So we've got three different um, blade sizes coming through. You'll notice well there's another Rolls Royce blade that's been scrapped. You can physically see inside, if I can get it so you can see them, like that. You can see the air holes there and there. The air vents, they physically pump air through that to keep the in engine cool. That's cooling air. These, I'll talk about materials in a sec. This is a guide vane out the back of the engine. This would be about that position there. This is the combustion chamber guides. You can clearly see why that one failed. The crack is incredibly obvious. That yellow colouring could be sulphur from the fuel, could be chromium oxide, because this is a chrome nickel alloy. So. Once again, you can also see the massive amounts of cooling air and the cooling holes that are necessary to um, keep the aircraft up in the air. That's where they're pumping the air through just to keep the engine cool. Inside the combustion chamber, we have got an aluminium honeycomb. This is the wall lining with a refractory inside. That's the outside of the engine. Refractory internal, this is probably sitting out the back, somewhere around about there in the engine. This here is the combust this here is the layer inside the actual um, combustion chamber. This is one of the plates. Let's talk about materials just quickly. You must have Must, must have a metal that, that forms an adherent oxide layer. If the oxide layer falls off at these high temperatures, your plane tends to fall apart, which is not good. So the engine must have an adherent scale layer. They use titanium. When the metal oxidises, there's the metal. Oxygen and high temperatures forms a scale layer. That scale sticks and it is solid and it is impervious. Oxygen does not get through it. So once it forms a scale layer, nothing more happens. Eventually a little bit of the metal migrates through, comes here and it gets thicker eventually. 
but that stays attached as the key. The titanium stays attached. Titanium blades are used out here. Once you get to higher temperatures, you need something with better and a more adherent scale. We use stainless steel. Stainless steel is iron, chromium, nickel. There's your metal. We form nickel, chromium, oxides. Nickel, chromium, oxides. Form on the outside, same thing. They are securely attached to the outside layer. Once you have your oxide layer, nothing more happens because it's physically attached. And finally, in the high temperature chamber, we need something that is also, um, we need something that is also temperature resistant. Steel melts at too low a temperature, you need a, one of the refractory metals. They use pure nickel. Nickel inside here to line this. This is pure nickel or a ni high nickel alloy, probably a nickel super alloy. The greeny colour gives it away, it's nickel. So, the nickel oxides, that green layer, they form at high temperatures and protect the metal as well as the metal having sufficient high temperature strength to, to survive in the application. That's materials used in an aircraft engine or a jet engine. Covered.